Democracy Day uh, as a new date uh, where which uh, Democracy Day will be celebrated in the country in honor of the presumed winner of the 1993 presidential election, uh, Mashud Abiola, who was fondly known as uh, MKO. The president uh, in 2018 further explained that the date was more symbolic uh, of democracy in the country uh, than the May 29th uh, date where we've been celebrating Democracy Day in the country. Uh, six months after the House of Representatives adopted June 12th as a new Democracy Day, uh, now the uh, Senate has uh, told uh, the same uh, line. When you look at the struggle of June 12th and the struggle MKO Abiola went through, would you say the passage of this bill has sort of validated the struggle? Yes, um, I agree with that. Mm. The, the passage of the bill uh, is, uh, is a justification to the fact that these are sacrifices of heroes if they are not rewarded at a particular point you know when those sacrifices are made somehow someday in history the the uh, the remark the compliment and the reward will certainly come mm. you know June 12th was a day which in the history of democracy or civil rule, let me say civil rule in this country, is a day that stands out in the, in the life of the people. The day that people in this country, cutting across the rich, the poor, political parties, the day that people identified that even when you, 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 even if you go to the elementary school, you easily ask people, May 29, is it because an election was set and that day was fixed for military uh, government to hand over to civilians? Is that what May that day to be symbolic? No. The struggle that ushered in democracy in Nigeria was a maximum struggle. Mm. People pay maximum prices. Lives were lost. The symbolic nature of June 12, it is not just about Abiola. It was, it was that day that people identified as the day in which the destinies, the fate of people, not only in Nigeria but in Africa, were going to be redefined. People had a lot of hope, you know. MKO came, he was a rich man, but he came with those ideas that people thought he put in place, if implemented in Nigeria, there will be a better country. So now the election was cancelled, People struggled through the time. People were victimized. People were sent on exile. People were killed. But eventually, today, we have a uh, 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 civil rule, which to be, uh, I still begin to question whether it is actually a uh, true democracy. But let us even leave that. If we want to talk about democracy, then why would it be May 29 in the first place? Oh. Why would it be May 29? What is so special about the day of, of handing over? No. The symbolic nation of June 12 cut across interest. And that is why you see it is very difficult for anybody to confidently come out to say that this decision is wrong. People could, people could grumble like, uh, like the Abiola's co-contestant, Tofa. He made a statement, you know. He made a statement that uh, Abiola was his friend. There's something personal about it. But he only thought people should not bring policies into June 12 uh, struggle or whatever it is. But he could not categorically come out and say no. Don't declare it as democracy day, because what would be your justification? That is the only day in the, the history of this country mm. that we can identify as a day in which the masses of this country have come out mm. to only challenge the powers that be. And that day is very, very symbolic. If, uh, if the Senate, if they have not done the right thing, the present declaration will still continue to be. TV. People right. still going to look at it as democracy day. day. So the fact that they have already passed uh, this act is a validation of uh, the wishes and the aspirations of the people in that regard. All right, uh, yes, uh, very uh, someone I, else. I, I want to disagree with my colleague. Very well. It's the validation of the wishes of the people and uh, the struggle for democracy. Uh, I, I appreciate the government for recognizing June 12th as a day that is supposed to be a symbolic day for democracy in Nigeria. But the thing is, why, what was the reason for the nullification of June 12 election? That is at the fundamental issue. And if that is not uh, uh, at this moment 
trash out. If that is not addressed, we will still have another June 12 in this nation. And so it is important, it is important for the government to address the issue, what led to the nullification of that, the freest and the fairest election that Nigeria had ever had. What stops the government from coming out to say that that election result must be declared and that Abiola, although he is dead, must be declared the president of this nation. And so posthumously, mm. so that everybody will know that you have validated what happened that time. But the mere uh, symbolic uh, uh, approval of a, a public holiday on the 12th of June is not a validation of what the struggle was meant for. It's only an issue of saying, well, we recognize. Mm. Definitely the, pr the president also uh, approved the, 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 the award of uh, the highest honor on the, 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 the late Bio, uh, uh, Chief MKO Abiola. And it's, it's not all that. It, it, that, that uh, it, is, it is a plus on the government. But what I am saying now is that in order to validate the struggle, in order to validate the wishes of the people, in order to validate that June 12th, the election that was uh, 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 deemed as freest and fairest, then there must be a pronouncement that Abiola actually won that election. There must be a pronouncement that Abiola was the president of this country or from that date. There must be a pronouncement that would uh, make Abiola, uh, Abiola's uh, 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 dependents part of what a president of this nation is entitled to. That is the, the, the only aspect that will enable us to see that this is a validation. Or that is a uh, yes, of the struggle. Mm. And the man died in the process of the struggle. So the mere, mere proclamation of uh, uh, the date as a, a public holiday is not enough. There should be more should be done. And then those who were involved in the uh, nullification of that election should be brought That's to book. Good. Let us know what happened. Why did you nullify the election that was uh, uh, seen to be freest and fairest? Who was behind it? What were the, the, uh, the, the, the issues that came up that, uh, uh, I mean, that warranted somebody to nullify election that was very free and fair? Election that people voted across religious. Uh, uh, that was the only election that you had the president and the vice president being Muslims. And then all the Christians voted massively for them. So uh, if there's anything that is going to validate that election, then there must be a pronouncement on the result. There must be a pronouncement on the fact that this man was the president of this whole, uh, country. Otherwise, I don't see the mere uh, uh, proclamation. The yes, not the, the main mm. disease. All right, all right. Uh, uh, Monday, like you said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, quickly. Think, but, but you, know, Fred, you didn't disagree with me. Mm. <laughs> because he what, only went a step position, further. Your uh, position yeah. was just at the, is at the extension of my own position. Yes, yeah. yes. Without, that, without validation. Now, all of the points you have mentioned are very beautiful which I also agree with. Mm. But me, I also see, see beyond that. I see, see beyond declaring Abiola as the president of this country, bringing people who were responsible for nullification to book. Mm. No, I see beyond that. Now, the question of validation is whether against their, whether against their will or not, the masses of this country were able to impose it on them. Now look, this day is more important than Whatever uh, democracy, whatever because who has the democracy is the people. The people. We should divide. We should be able to divide what is our own democracy. Mm -hmm. It should not be according to your own definition. So now, if uh, we talk about validation, we have been able to make them. That is the political elite to recognize the fact that because the the election that brought members of the National Assembly in as it is today, it is not as important to Nigerian people. In, in their history, yes. as that June 12th election. And if you want to look at it, if you, if you declare June 12th as a democracy day, at the time when history is being taken away from the curriculum of, of our, our institutions, I, I, think, I think in history, in the, in the years to come, our children who ordinarily were forgotten that that day even existed, who have even forgotten about Abiola, they'll be able to ask what is significant about this particular day. Then that history will come back. This is what happened. This is how it happened. But Democracy Day, declaring a day as Democracy Day, just like my friends, is beyond that mere declaration and celebration. Hmm. That was I was going to get to that. Okay. But you, the, you, 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 
you made me talk about validation mm. and i agree it is a validation yeah. or the struggle of the mm. people to say that this day must but be that recognized. is not where the struggle that ends is, the struggle does not end there mm. if under this present dispensation if we talk about celebration the mayor coming out or the president and members of the political class to gather whatever forum to say they are celebrating june 12 has not translated you mm. know to what the masses of the country can actually celebrate. Mm. If we talk about democracy, even the party, the ruling party in the country, they don't embrace the tenets of democracy. Mm. Even with the running of their party, then we know that it is always it is always a deceit for the ruling class. Some people have said it's opportunistic of the president, which I can also agree with. But I want to leave that aside. Whether it is opportunistic of him or him or not, the day has been declared a democracy day. What is democracy? Are people actually seeing the benefit of democracy according to how it should be? If workers are not any proportionately to their labor, if minimum wage has been pegged at 30,000, are governors who want to go and celebrate June 12, I say they, can, they cannot pay that 30,000 naira. Mm. If poor people in this country cannot afford three square meals, and you say June 12 democracy, they, are we celebrating together? So we are not celebrating meaning together. even the, the lessons of what um, the, we should what learn, things the, we should learn from June 12. I mentioned something. Really I mentioned something. I yes. said Abiola was a rich man, mm. but he came with pro poor people policies. policies. What are those policies? As this present government, or even in the course of declaration of June 12 as a democratic day, or in the course of passing of that bill in the house, do they discuss about those policies? Do mm. they talk about because it's not about free and fair election? We are only deceiving ourselves. Election is free and fair, <laughs> but education is not free. Mm. But who is so fair? So all of these things must be free and fair equally. There must be a free and fair society. Mm. If you ask them, in the course of validating that you have as a democracy day, if you ask them to incorporate these policies, discuss about free education, discuss about some of this government that are increasing school fees everywhere in all these states, mm. who are increasing school fees from 30,000 to 200,000, taking it out of the rich or the children or the poor, discuss it, make it a law. They will run away from that and that. They will be afraid. Discuss about your allowances. Workers are not being paid 30,000. Discuss about your allowance. Let us see. Mm. They will run away. But they deceive us by saying we are celebrating. Are we celebrating? So without bringing into practice the tenets of democracy and what Abiola himself stood for. Stood for. He was, just like I said, he was a rich man, but he died a poor man's life, a poor man's death. You know, he came and said he was going to break chains. He was moving around, he was talking about rehabilitation, repairation, you know, compensation. He was talking about how there's going to be free education. It is not because of his children or his family. No. So merely even declaring him as the president and his family benefiting from what family of a president should benefit has not validated that struggle. That struggle was beyond the Biola. The people that died in that struggle, a lot of people died or some. Abiola was a symbol. Do you know the number of students who were shot? Why protesting? Right from the day, they, right from the declaration they expected, though, people were being killed every day. Apart from Abiola and Kudra, do you know the number of people that were killed, even within the political class, apart from those who were able to run into exile? Mm. So I am saying that declaring June 12 as a democracy day is a validation, even against their will, that they, this day is significant. Mm. But it is beyond that. We have to, we, the, the, the deceit, the masses of the country must be able to see beyond the deceit of saying that we are celebrating. Are we actually celebrating when you see governors who are saying they cannot pay 30,000 to a worker? So you mean at this point, the people should demand more? It is those policies. Those policies, the mass of Nigerian people should ask I questions about, about those policies. policies. Right. Pensioners should not be dying or killed without being paid. Mm -hmm. And you are saying we are celebrating. It is beyond that. Mm -hmm. And we must be able to bring all these, all these things uh, uh, to, to public but, domain. Very well, my brother. I, I, I discovered that it's actually uh, to him the same line that I do. Mm. Uh, because uh, <laughs> <laughs> After all. because, because well, uh, he is saying that um, mm. in order to actually validate the wishes of the people, those programs that Abiola came in with should be implemented. And that is when you will be able to see that the wishes of the people have been validated by this government. Indeed. And indeed, in fact, what Abiola lined up when we sit down and look at his manifestos, I know those, in fact, before he was even, no, I mean, the election was nullified. He was making plans to bring in so much into the system, to, to change the, 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 the workings of the system. And if 
we want to we want to really validate what the I mean the wishes of the people based on the, the June 12 election, then all those programs that Abiola wanted to implement should be implemented outside the issue of declaring him the president and also making sure that those who brought us to this uh, uh, situation are punished. We should as well implement the programs to ensure that there is that validation because I, I only see it as recognition of June 12. Mm. I, I, I don't see it as validation because the moment you validate it means that you make it legal mm. for everybody to know that this was what actually happened. And so in order to validate it, make it legal, mm. you should do the right thing. All right. Let the person be, be declared the winner and then the president. Because um, then, uh, we have many Nigerians who speak beautifully well about uh, the policies of yes. uh, late Awolo War. Yes. And then who really practices those policies? Who really imbibes those policies into, well. into their manifestos when they go into political offices? I'm actually no. trying to recap what yes, you're trying yes, to say. So yes, it's not yes, about no. the man Abiola. It's not no. about uh, struggling for the June 12. Yes. Now the June 12. Do you really believe Bilango. in this policy? Yes. Do you really want to programs. implement those programs, beautiful programs? You yes. don't even need more. Just incorporate those policies into your manifestos yes, and you're good to go. All right. Now, as um, come May, to, well, the inauguration day, according to uh, the Minister of Information, has now been shifted to uh, June 12. Now, we are going into the next level. So what are those agendas do you think uh, the incoming administration, well, continuation of this um, Buhari administration, what do you think he should start doing differently, you know, to make the next four years impactful on the lives of Nigeria and to leave a meaningful legacy in this country? Yes, uh, President Buhari has to uh, actually reflect properly and deeply on the, on the four years that uh, God gave him to be able to rule this country. We, for those of us who were part of the process, we knew how it was when he was coming in. Mm. You know, we knew the, the hope the hope reposed in him, in his coming, mm. you know, by the people of this country. And we know how things are to go, you know. Uh, he has four years. By the grace of God, he will live. He has to reflect very deeply. Some of these policies, we are in this country. We have seen uh, alarming increase in negative things, like killings, political killings, ritualist killings, and banditry. Yes, uh, you call you, you whether they are whether they are headsmen or whatever killings, kidnapping everywhere. We have seen this. It was never this bad. It was never this bad. Even 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 in the era that even in the era that we condemned, even in the era that we we the, we, we, we 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 caused, it was not this bad. Every day on social media, you see a lot of gory sites of Nigerians who have been slaughtered who have been murdered, if you are the chief security officer of this country, the lives of these people are entrusted in your hands. Mm. If you believe it is, it is normal, that it is just normal, or you can find explanations to explain why it happens, that is not enough. You are, you, 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 you are, you are, your responsibility, you are not living up to it. You see? And the economic situation of the people, under this present government, all of us are all of us are we all of us are we are victims. <laughs> you know. So when there is increase in ritual killing, when there is increase in kidnapping, it has gone to a level whereby you can never know where it is going to happen. Kidnappings are different levels. It is not just on the road, it is not just on Abuja roads. It happens even within town. What are people looking for? People are looking for money. People are desperate to live in a deadly situations. So the, the economic policies of the government has to be revisited. I don't know, it has taken four years to be able to lay a foundation. Within the next four years, if Nigeria cannot actually reap the fruit of their, of their labor, for, for, people, people came together. It was a revolution. Apart from people in politics, apart from people in partisan politics, apart from people in parties, political parties, apart from people in PDP and APC, to people who are not in political parties then, they repost greater soul. That the coming of Buhari to take over from PDP was going to turn the country around. But what, what have we seen? 
in educational sectors. Increment in school fees everywhere is as a result of the policies of the government from above. Is that the is that the, is that state government complaining about subvention that uh, uh, allocation that are not coming in time but that are not enough? And if we look at it, wherever wherever there is an increment in school fees of those higher institutions, and you have APC governors in the shadow, it is still the policies of APC. It is still the policies of this present government. So there is no way the federal government can say because that school is a state school, they have increased their fees from 30,000 to 200,000, that he is not responsible. Education should be made accessible to the poor people of this country and to their children. Mm. Should be made accessible. If the economic planning of the government cannot take the people beyond where they are, they, we will witness worse days ahead. Mm. We, will, we will witness more killings. We will witness more kidnappings. And all of these are for economic reasons. You see people kidnapping, majority of them, some of them are graduates. When they interview them on social media, you listen to them. You see that some of these people are graduates, but they want to survive desperately, and they have taken to that negative trend. Mm -hmm. And the government sounds are not, uh, are not, are not, are not, cannot be washed off. Mm. Yes. So we, 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 we're we, we, in a we, dire situation. Yes, and yes, the president, yes. He's a zest of majesty. It's not just for him to, I, I, I want <laughs> to be to, president. I, 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 uh, Judith, I, I must mm. confess that this government is the most tolerated government that I have ever witnessed. Since I became my years are very tolerant. Very you ask well. me. Uh, this, this is the most toler tolerated. Mm. In fact, I uh, when the government took off, fuel was is it 97 or 87 naira per liter? Yes, it was 97. And they moved it to 145 naira per liter. Nobody protested, nobody carried placards. And then, because of that singular increase, everything doubled. The school fees, like my colleague has stated, that what you were paying in 2014 is now double of that amount that you can pay. It's or so triple, so ten times, some places. Uh, and, uh, very unfortunate. And then you discover that we have the chief executive officer who is not, who seems to be not bothered about what is really going on, the insecurity here and there, and then. My own, my own advice to the president is that he should dismantle the cabal in, the, uh, uh, in Asorok. That is very important if he wants to succeed. He must bring in people who think very well for him. If he doesn't have the capacity to, to do that, then we are not, in fact, the next level we are talking about is going to be worse than where we are. That cabal must be dismantled and then bring in uh, 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 ministers People, special advisors who have sound reasoning. You know, this, uh, uh, we, we have to give it to some of the past uh, leaders. Obasanjo brought in some people. In fact, if it was this president that was, that was the one that came in in 1999, <laughs> Nigeria would have gone deep down inside the, 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 the grave. So, but the man just came in, he brought in brains from outside to come and change and then galvanize, and turn around the economy. And then we now saw ourselves growing, the GDP, GDP growing up. Suddenly, suddenly, the politics of the day came in, and people started playing politics with one thing or the other. And before you knew it, the people that won, the, were not interested in what was going on in the country took over, and things became worse. And that was why everybody rose up and said, no, enough is enough. And then they thought, in our own thinking, mm. we thought that this present government, this present president in particular, president in particular, was going to turn things around. But when he came in, it has been excuses here and there, and then we saw ourselves where we are. Mm. The man needs to sit up, change his own, all the service, I mean, uh, 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 service chiefs must be changed. You have to take into consideration the fact that we are a heterogeneous society. Don't make it to look like you are in favor of a particular section of the country. Be the president of everybody, all the sections, all the uh, states of the federation, not the people that voted especially for you and all that. Then when you are making an a, a, a appointment, take the constitution into consideration because the constitution specifies federal character in all the appointments across board. So you have to take that into consideration. Not that you just feel that 
these people are from these are the ones that you trust that can handle this and all that. No, we have well able Nigerians qualified all across everywhere in Nigeria. So bring them on board. Let this this insecurity be reduced because the moment you tackle insecurity from the root, the root. you 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 have we will mm -hmm. have peace. Mm -hmm. All these issues of uh, graduates becoming uh, kidnappers and all that. If you create enough employment, you create the avenue for people to work and get money. Nobody will go into that because they know that the moment you are caught, you are killed. Mm. You are dead. So they, 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 it's a, 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 a sort of uh, signing your death sentence so the you moment you go into it. you should learn so from the mistakes of the, the past. The mistakes of the past. And then to make the next level actually Better, better, better than what uh, we, we, we had before. Because mm. if you don't, if you don't clean up the system as I have uh, advocated, mm. you discover that we are going into an abyss, and mm. which would be very unfortunate. <coughs> All right, uh, you're still watching Democracy and the Rule of Law. We'll take a very quick break. And when we return, we'll be discussing the squabbles between outgoing governors and the governors elect in some state of the federation over last minute policies uh contracts and negotiations amongst others just stay with us we'll be right back Welcome back and away from uh, the recognition of uh, June 12 by the Senate. We now discuss uh, the last minute uh, project uh, contracts negotiations uh, by some outgoing governors in Nigeria. Governors elect from some states like Imu, Oyo, Ogun, Adamawa have recently cried out against uh, the outgoing governor's last minute withdrawals and spendings, award of contract negotiations, amongst others. Allegations of last minute withdrawals and awards of bogus contracts have sparked up verbal exchanges between some governors elect and the outer uh, going uh, governors. Uh, this controversy has further worsened the already strained relationship between the political parties uh, and their leaders involved. As the outgoing governors accuse the governors elect of lacking the right to challenge them uh, on issues uh, pertaining to the administration in the state. While some wonder if denying outgoing governors of access to state funds months before the expiration of their tenure would not amount to a move to close down governance. Others said there is the urgent need to legally stop reckless spending awards of contracts by greedy outgoing governors who in a bid to gather state resources for their personal retirement may put the incoming government in unnecessary uh, financial stress. Uh, last week, uh, Governor of um, Ekiti State, Kade Fayamin, uh, laid off about 2,000 workers who were employed by uh, the Fayoshi administration at the twilight of his administration. Also, the governor of um, the, the governor elect of uh, Oyo State is accusing Governor Biola Ajimobi of last minute contract negotiations. While the governor has said he will continue working till the May last day, the last day yeah, course, May 28th. He's the governor. Also, we have the squabble between uh, Governor Fintiri, uh, the governor of um, Adamawa State, and the incoming uh, governor, and also that of. Um, Imo state between uh, Emeka Hedioha and uh, Rochas Okorocha. What do you make about all those last minute contracts, negotiations? Uh, even uh, Ajimobi uh, inaugurated about 11 special advisors there about. What's your take on all this? Why now? Why a few weeks to the end of your uh, tenure? Uh, we, in this country, we have to, we have to uh, decide where we are going whether we really need to move forward. The, the last minute uh, policies, or whatever, whether it is best policies <laughs> for some of these governors, are very embarrassing, very, very embarrassing. But if we look at the, our political culture, this is how it has been, this is how it has always been. You know, some of us, for a few years now, we have attained the 
the age of political majority, we know what is going on in government. Mm. Every governor, when they discover that, if except if it is the incumbent that has been re-elected, or if it is the incumbent whose anointed has been re-elected to take over, what the what what a uh, Imo State Governor Okoro Charles is being accused uh, of doing right now, if they are if they are proved, what me I have read. If all these allegations are approved, it will be very unfortunate. And these are acts that will actually take an ex governor to prison if they are approved. But if the anointed candidate of the governor then has been elected to take over from Okorosha, I am very sure even now, if Okorosha is actually truly doing all this or not, the public will not hear about it because it will look like a family arrangement. Mm. If we look at states, where the same party or the same person is continuing in office. There have not been this kind of allegations. Of course, you're right. Now, I look at Kwara State. In Kwara State, the PDP <laughs> set up a transition committee of 100, 100 man committee. <laughs> the Ukubai the governor set up a transition committee of 21 man committee. Whereas, in Abia State, where it is continuity, mm. they have just seven man transition committee, okay, yeah. <laughs> you know, looking at smooth uh, and whatever, how the government is going to take off again. When you now look at a hundred man committee from, uh, from, AP, uh, from uh, APC coming, then this other side, 21 committee coming, they want to talk about how government is going to, how the government is going to hand over to the new governor. Like you know, how, this, how this, effective can this, this be? Is, this is a fraudulent process on its own. Mm. You do know that the committees, they don't sit and take pure water. <laughs> you know, it is a capital intensive project, you know. And that is, in fact, those hundred man committee, if you are not careful, they may benefit more than many SSA who are going to be appointed. <laughs> because they are the first set of people to be recognized by the governor. A hundred man committee is like a hundred man, you know, temporary employment <laughs> to eat from the national cake. These are embarrassing things, you know. Mm. So now, the the interest of the people, because me, I look at the accusations and counter accusations. Mm. If we are not careful, we will sink into it. Mm. I begin to defend war against the other. Mm. But we should not look at it from the angle. We should look at it from the angle of where is the interest of the people in, in all this. In all of this. If a governor that is coming in your state. He's already saying the day they said minimum wage has been increased to 30,000. He said he can't pay. He has not taken over. He said he cannot pay. But now you, you now realize that Adjimobi is giving out contracts, which you think you are the one that ought to, because that is just the summary of it. Mm. All of these things is using to compensate these people. I am the one who ought to do it. We know that the government, the government, the, the handing over is, is done. Of course. But it is in bad faith for this 11 tower. This is out of contracts and you are paying mobilization free in millions and billions. You know, but if our institutions have culture of accountability, it will not happen. How many governors, how many governors elect have in their policy the policy to probe <laughs> their, their prejudices? They don't have the courage. Even if they are manifesto, they cannot add it. Mm. One of the things that they used to campaign against Aula was then was that he said he was going to probe. I said, this person that is coming to probe is going to send people to prison. When, when Buhari was coming in, the first set of people that had anything against him were people who were saying, ah, this one coming is coming to send people to prison. To prison. But when he got there, you know, he did not even probe. He didn't do any of those things. And when you are beginning on, a very, on that wrong foundation, mm. and we have seen it as part of our culture, it will continue. If a governor in office knows that if this incoming governor is going to look into my activities, it's going to look at my, my withdrawals, all these withdrawals, all this money I withdraw from these banks. Mm. It's going to look at the legality of this contract I'm giving out to this 11 tower contractor and the justification of the money I'm now paying. He won't do it. Mm. So it cannot really be in terms of what do you think or what you don't think. So it, it cannot it, be it, about it, law. It, it's a culture it that has be been about left law. unchecked. It cannot be about law. Mm. If, 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 if our institutions are made to have culture of accountability, Mm. And a governor is coming in, it's automatically, whether he has it in mind or not, is automatically obligated to look at the activities of, you look at what is happening right now. Ajibobi is going, mm. he's naming streets after people, and he also named the hospital after his name. 
Who told you that your legacy is uh, is uh, is what? Name and hospital in your name in that state. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, now let's look at the uh, legal angle of this. Yeah, Does a, a governor elect have any constitutional? statutory or procedural basis until he's sworn into office. Uh, so what is happening uh, between the governors and governors elect? Does it amount to meddling in statecraft by this governors elect? Uh, really, um, uh, uh, Judith, government is a continuum. Okay, yeah. It continues from one person to the other. Mm. And so decisions that are made by one governor must con must be upheld by the next governor unless there are illegal decisions okay. like the word of contract i want to come i mean f uh, begin from there before i move to your question yeah. the word of contract when you award a contract to a particular organization and you follow due process and all that that contract is binding on the next governor it's a government contract. Whether he likes and it so or not. And so whether he likes it or not, mm. if he, he, he decides to breach, to terminate, to end the contract, the contractor can go to court and claim damages. Sure. And so it is very, very dicey for a governor to just, because of political inclinations and all that, decide to uh, uh, give contract, award contract at the end of his tenure without taking into consideration the pause and the surrounding circumstances of the government. Mm. Because what he is trying to do is to bring the next government into, or the next governor into his knees, trying to look for where to source money to pay the necessities of uh, the state. That is one. Two is that the issue of even the, uh, uh, the, the, the staff, the, the, the workers that were, that were uh, terminated were dismissed is another issue. These workers had been given employment letters. Granted that probably they are still under temporary uh, employment. If they were to be on permanent employment, you cannot just terminate them. You cannot dismiss them. You must follow due process. Because this is a, 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 I mean a contract of employment that has the three flavor. Once it has the three flavor, you, it's not like the master servant thing that you can just call your, your staff and sack him. No. It has to, um, you must follow it uh, uh, religiously to be able to, to remove or to be able to sack or to dismiss a staff. So these people also have a claim in court. They can go to court to enforce their claims. Now, a governor elect is not a governor. He is not entitled to, the, uh, to have access to the administration of the state until he is sworn in. From the day he is sworn in, he takes over. He is recognized. So at the moment, what the governor elects, uh, the, uh, the, the governors elect should do, should be to look for a way to align themselves with the governor to see how they can work out a smooth transition into their own coming in. And then what you see, you don't start shouting and making all manner of noises. The, this governor, you cannot you cannot charge him to court now as it is because of immunity. So once that immunity is removed by him being removed as a governor, or his tenure expiring, then you can set the missionary motion for him to be charged to court, for him to be investigated. Mm -hmm. he, he can be investigated now, but he cannot be charged. Charge. So for him to be charged to court for uh, all the crimes that he has committed, but for you to sit down and be shouting that the governor has done this, he's going to do this, he's going to do that, it's just that you are trying to whip sentiment mm. and bring in the sympathy of the people into bear. Because but, what, what, what we saw happen was after the declaration of some governors, um, you know, if promoted other political parties as yes. winner of elections, instead of making comments, you yes. know, cautioning the, the, the governors, yes, cautioning it's not, it's civil not, servants. It's not right. And so it's not right. That's why I ask the question, uh, it, does this not amount legal. to meddling in state uh, That is exactly what the, the word that is should be used. Mm. It's, it's, it is a, 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 a sort of meddling into uh, the, 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 the decision of uh, the, the governance of the state. He is not yet the governor. And until he is sworn in, he cannot inaugurate it. He cannot be the governor of that state. If anything happens now, God forbid, and he's no longer there, 
He cannot be said to have taken any action or any decision concerning the state. His decision now is not binding on the state. Granted that he has all the retinue of uh, 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 security and all that that portray that of the governor, they will blow siren. You know what we like so much, blow si siren when they are on their uh, uh, way to Susu place so that they will say, who is that? They say, governor elect. He is not the governor. Hmm. And whatsoever he does now does not bind the state. It is only when he is sworn in that he can become a, go a, a legal governor of the state and then he will take decisions. And whatsoever decision he takes will now be binding. And then the ex-governor will be made to account hmm. for what he has done. It's unfortunate, like my colleague said, all these issues that you are hearing is only in where, where you have opposition parties coming to take over from the incumbent. Where you have the same party, you don't hear anything. anything. Because it's chop, 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 make a chop now, no problem. And, you, and, the, and they know that it's continuum. The moment you leave, I will continue. So many, so many things happen in this country, my sister. Mm. Do you believe that the governor-elect, if it is a political godson, I mean, uh, son of the, the former governor, before you know it, he is getting so much money from the state post to the governor every month. And this is very unfortunate. And that is why it is not possible for him to say anything concerning his godfather. Because his godfather brought him to come and also chop. Mm. And so it is, it is very unfortunate that in those situations, nobody will talk. Nobody will speak until an opposition party comes in to take over. Mm. All the mess that happened in this country under PDP, nobody would have heard if APC did not take over. Mm. And once... Uh, uh, um, if PDP by any chance will take over again from APC, you will hear mm. what will happen. Oh. <laughs> because all those things that we've been hearing and seeing and all that, you will now see and say, ah, so if this could even have happened under right. this administration. All right. That is the situation. All right. Um, I just versus... want to add to that. Okay, quickly. The issue of uh, the government of the mentioning in the affairs, yeah. it is without prejudice of the fact that any citizen of that state has the right to freedom of expression mm. to criticize the politics of, of course, that. As a citizen. If, mm. if a governor who, who has been voted down because he didn't do well, his uh, awarding contract, is paying millions, is naming places after him, an average citizen, that governor there is also a citizen. A citizen. citizen. That is it. Oh, you have it. to tell him that uh, as a that citizen, he, yes. he's, uh, he's in bad faith. All right, so do you, do you think there's a need for a legal framework to avoid such a financial recklessness and uh, a possible, you know, cartel the number of um, things or policies an outgoing governor can do, you so, know. To me, we should be tired of many laws in this country. <laughs> <laughs> it's implementation. Of many laws. We, don't, we, have, we have laws in this country. When, uh, when kidnapping took commercial dimension, all the states, you know, they started looking at uh, how to enact law on kidnapping. But there have been laws. In our criminal code, there have been laws criminalizing kidnapping before now. Mm. But then, you know, kidnapping has been from day one. Uh, why growing up, you have parents used to tell us, if you see so, 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 if you see uh, a strange face, wrong, you mm. know, because then we also know that with our ritualists, you know, but it was not as commercialized and democratized as it is today. <laughs> that an average university student, you know, who is studying engineering, mm. He's not thinking of how to live uh, as, a, as, a, as a civil engineer, to go and help, to go and join Gunnar's Beggars or Blue Road. No! They are looking for how to join a syndicate that could kidnap within a, within a short period of time and get millions of naira that they can take a car to their village. It is that portion. That law has been there. But what are we, what are we seeing? Mm. The, the, the fact that there are laws does not mean that there will be, there will be uh, obedience. You know, there, it doesn't mean there will be obedience. If if, 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 if there is that law, which I believe there cannot be, there cannot be a law that will say that uh, <laughs> when you are, you, are, you are going to hand over the next four months, you cannot award contract. There is not that law. There cannot be that law. The only law that can be there is to look at the process of those, your level tower activities, to see the one that is legal and see the one that is not legal. legal. We have enough laws that have taken care of all of those things. Mm. Look at the national crime laws. The EFGC came over the under our passenger and the pump uh, 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 persons and capital. Into it. Don't you know that SFU, special fraud unit in the Koji that has been for a very long time, is the one in charge of financial crimes. I, I see, ICPC was there. 
to take care of uh, some of these things. But on the other hand, pump capital and persons into EFGC. You know, we have to make our institutions to work. If our institutions are working, it will be very difficult for a bank manager to collude with the governor, mm -hmm. to withdraw millions or billions of naira from the state force within, within a short period of time when he knows that the governor is going to hand over because he will fear consequences. But our actions, if the institutions don't make consequences to be attached to the activities of people in public office, there is no law, there is no mm -hmm. law that will, say a go that will tie the hand of the governor because he has been voted on the hands over. Mm -hmm. He's still the chief executive officer of that state. If you are saying that they are, they are, they are, they are, whether we look at law and a means of portions of it to say that, look, once you, you, you lose an election, you cannot act, or this is how you can act, this is how you cannot act. At least stifling governors in the state. You want to stick to governors. <laughs> Has it been, has it been mm. the, the, the governor's caution is always in good faith. Mm. And the institutions will not allow it to be in bad faith direction. Mm. There is no, there are, a, a, a governor has four weeks to hand over, can make history. Hmm. Can make history. It's not by just employing people into a places where you know there are no offices or there are no chairs. It's not by employing 5,000 people into a local government when you know the local government has capacity of just 500. Hmm. Which you know it is, it, it is criminal. It's because you want to spy the government. You want to tell the government that look, you are going to meet uh, something wow. that will scare you. <laughs> oh, you know? All right. There cannot be law. Hmm. There has not be law. I want you to be made to work. If our answers are working, if you commit a financial crime, you know that you are going to be that not about after leaving office. Hmm. You will be afraid yes, because some of these contracts do not follow due process. All right. Do not follow due process. All right. I, 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 I also think uh, uh, that um, although if the institutions are able to work very well, there will be no need for us to be talking of laws. But if there are laws that say that the moment you there is an election and then a winner is declared. The sitting governor, even if you are the one who is going to uh, continue, continue, must not award contracts on capital projects, must not carry out employment of people and all that within this period until when you are uh, sworn, uh, when the next government or governor is sworn in. I think if there is that law, it would uh, work as a, a check. And so that the people that, if you had been in government for one, I mean for three and a half years, so to say, mm. or three years, eight months, and you could not award a capital project contract, you could not employ people, you cannot use the four months that are remaining to carry out a, a contract, I mean to award contract on capital project and to employ people. So if there, is, there, there are laws that streamline or uh, 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 work on that aspect to ensure that people, I mean the governors who are now elected, uh, 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 governors elect, even if they are sitting governors, must not. And then those who are sitting governors who are no longer going to, must not. All the, governor, uh, governor, uh, the uh, governors that are coming in, I mean uh, that, that, that are sitting, mm -hmm. must not award contract within this period until after the next one is sworn in. I think it would act as a check. And uh, some of these issues that we are raising, because if you do, that be, would become a criminal offense. You understand? Okay. It would no longer be an issue of somebody saying, let us investigate and see whether it was properly done and all that. No. Mm -hmm. Once you do against the law, it would become a crime. And so you, uh, uh, they come in and see that you had awarded a contract for, even if it's a one kilometer route, that, that is a capital project, uh, during this period, then you are picked up to go and answer for what you did. Mm. There's, there should be no excuse for that. And so I, I believe, I, I, I believe that Therefore, although we have, uh, we, we, we should, if there is a law to checkmate this, it will also act as a check on the governors. Just to add before we move, All the right. people of this country, mm. they most develop their uh, critical culture of challenging those in government. Mm. How is law going to be made in the House of Assembly where we have uh, 24 <laughs> members who belong to the same political party of the government? Because when you talk about contracts, the contracts are not awarded to animals, they are awarded to human beings. And these are people that, is, uh, they are other benefactors for the political, but maybe they are not as close to the government, you know, in the last election that they lost. Mm. So the, those in the assembly will now make law that well, because even the government that is coming to take over, is still going to repeat the same thing. When it is four weeks to go, he will still mm. do all of these criminal things. All right. So who is the, the interest of the people must what? be be considered false. Mm. The political class they don't bother about this. This person complaining, let we be here the next four years. 
These are the basic complaining about the movie. Let us whether we don't do the same thing. All right. You give me more science, so I'll be able to ask questions. All right. And on that note, uh, we end today's edition of Democracy and the Rule of Law. Thank you, Barista Tokweta Moku. And uh, Barista Mike Munnan. Thank you very much. My name is Judith Renu. I'll join us next Sunday for an exciting edition of Democracy and the Rule of Law at 1 p.m. prompt. Thank you for watching. Mi corazón enseste en Lola Volcán.